Hey, what's up everybody? Evan with Fishing Life 101. Today we're gonna try to see what we can catch from a small river that we have here. It's just me fishing today, so I'm not bringing quite as many rods. Just a couple catfishing rods. I have one more in my truck. The net here, rubberized net. I have my pole stand, and then I have a bucket that has a cast net in it. I brought along some frozen bait to use, some frozen shad that I normally use, but I'd like to see if I can catch some live bait today too. So I have an extra rod that's rigged up with a hook and bobber. Just trying to see what we can get out of that. And then that's why I have the cast net too. So I won't have too long to fish today, just a few hours. We'll see how it goes guys, time to get started. This river is way down here. So right here we can see the water level is normally up way past here. Normally only a little bit of this tree out here is showing. We're actually fishing right over there. It's, it's kind of a new spot for us. We've mostly stuck to fishing down there further. So we're gonna try a new spot here. We're gonna try to hit some of this brush pile, put, it, put one around there, and then go down there a little further too. Just trying to see just a little bit of a new spot, trying to maybe find a little something that we're not quite used to. So we'll go ahead and get everything rigged up here. Hey guys, so we're getting set up now. We're just using frozen shad. We just have a shad head on here. I'm using the body sections on the other two lines. For these, I just like hooking them right through the nose like that. And then we'll just throw that out. I've got the first one down there. This one's gonna be basically just right across here. And then next one's gonna be kind of right over there by that brush thicket. We'll go ahead and put this one out. Putting him right on the other side, just a little easy cast. And here's the third one we're throwing out. We're just putting a small body piece on it. Some of the times I just cut the gut pouches out of the shad and just toss those out. Like here, we're not, we don't have like huge catfish around here or anything. So most of the time it seems like if you have that on, all you're doing is just giving the fish something to grab and then they're gonna take it away. You're gonna have something on there and then they're either gonna pull the fish off or just let it go. So I find that does more harm than good if you have a big chunk of fish on there. You got something on here, guys. I was just getting ready to throw the cast net out. Turn it up. What do we have here? Yep, it's something's running. Not very big though, it's a smaller fish. Got a little bow fin. Honestly, he's a little bit bigger than what I thought he was. He got ah, he got off right there. He ran into a snag and pulled it off. We'll have to go ahead and rebate this one. So that bowfin that we caught, he was probably about three pounds or so, but he got off the hook. We didn't quite land him in. What I'm doing is I'm just gonna go ahead and reel this piece in. I'm gonna throw it up kind of close to where I caught that last one. I'm gonna do this because I'm gonna take the other pole and bait it up with a worm and toss that out, see if we can't get a bluegill or something to use for bait. You always want to use fresh bait, but when fresh bait, it's not always possible. Right out there. Now I'm only going down one pole because in Indiana, it's not legally used more than three poles at a time. So three is your maximum. So now I have one that's just gonna sit out of commission while I'm using it to see if I can catch any bluegill. Got another one on guys, same location. I was just getting ready to cast out the other pole. I think he, yeah, he's on there. Yeah, he's in the sticks now. Uh-oh. Gotta get him out of there. You see where those sticks are? That's where he is. I think I'm actually just gonna give him a little bit of line. See if he can pull himself out of there. Hopefully he's still on. Sometimes they're not still on whenever they're in that much cover. Uh, no, he popped off. 
But to be honest, guys, that's one of the things you get whenever you fish around cover. Sometimes the fish will run off on you, and sometimes you just get stuck and you can't get them out. That's just kind of the game that you play fishing by cover. Now, at least I got this one out and I didn't lose any gear, but the fish did run off on me, which was kind of unfortunate. And I just threw it in a tree. And fish on, guys. Pulling some. It's not really quite on what we're looking for yet. There, there we go. It's kind of running at us. Yep. Probably another bowfin, though, if I had to guess. The way he's running like that. Oh, there was a bowfin and he just spit it out. It's what you get a lot of times with them. They've uh, chewed this bait up a little bit. I'll have to put it back on right. That's kind of the game that you play with bowfin. That's at least the second one. Could have been the third one because I've had three fish on tonight. I'll still reuse this fish. It's just a little mangled. Actually, it's really mangled. I think this is probably seen its better days. We'll go ahead and throw that one out for the fish. So it seems like there's a lot of videos on YouTube with fishing and it's where guys saying that you don't need the best gear. You can get some cheap gear to get started, cheap rods and reels, everything like that. And that, so it doesn't take, and they're trying to show that it doesn't take a lot of money, which is great. And I've made a video or two like that as well, just how to get started with fishing. But what I wanted to talk about today was about the area that you're fishing. Cause a lot of times, I see a lot of people on YouTube say this about not having the best gear, but a lot of times you'll see them and they have this huge reservoir or a huge lake or a huge river really close to them. And to, to me, it seems like having the cheap gear isn't as big of a deal sometimes as just having a place to fish because I don't have a place like that to fish. This, this river system is a lot of what I fish and it's a small river system. So you're not gonna see, like I haven't, it's not like I've been pulling out big blue cats or flatheads or anything like that. There's probably some, some decent sized flatheads. I've actually never caught one before, but I don't have a huge river system right by my house where I can catch these monster fish. And, and you know, at first, whenever I first started watching YouTube more and watching some of the fishing videos, it was kind of discouraging whenever you would watch some of these people that I don't know how close they are but they go fishing there quite often so it leads me to believe that it's pretty close but one thing that I've learned with fishing and especially with fishing more is that you just have to make the most of what you have you have to be able to work with what you've got and you're not always going to have the best fishing supplies or the best fishing area or there's I guess what I'm trying to say is there's always there's always going to be some kind of advantage and some kind of a disadvantage. And we can see this all over the place wherever you go fishing. Up north, there's some great fishing up north, but they're probably not going to have like as big of the catfish, so that could discourage some of us. Or I don't live that far north, I live in southern Indiana, but even up north further that might discourage more people that they don't have the huge catfish like they do down south, especially around like Tennessee. Georgia, North Carolina, or uh, Virginia. But we've really just got to work with what we have. Like what I found out here that we have a lot of is bowfin. And that's a fish that I never even really knew about. And I've had a blast catching them. I don't get near all of them in, but I've learned a lot. And I mean, really it's a good time. Some of these days I'm catching quite a few fish and they're all sizable. I don't really catch them under two pounds or I, I'm guessing they're probably around a couple pounds. I don't I don't weigh near all of them, but they put up a heck of a fight and I've talked a lot of, about them in my videos before, but that's one of the reasons why I, I don't know if I'd really call it focusing on them, but I do catch more of them, um, more so than catfish. They're just a lot more common here than catfish. And I think it's got something to do with how muddy the river system is here and how it's not very big how it can get kind of shallow. And I think that makes it hard for a lot of other fish to live in, but bowfin can breathe air. So it's not nearly as big of a deal for them. They don't have to have the same level of dissolved oxygen in the water as other fish do. So they can live in low oxygenated waters and still do good. 
Consequently, they're one of the most common fish in this river system. Even though they're fun to fish and even though they get fairly big, what I would call fairly big, it's nothing like what a blue cat or a flathead gets. They get significantly larger. And that's why you see so much, so many people talk about catching those big fish. And this area has good large mouths too. I, I do some bass fishing a little bit. I'm, I'm getting a little bit more into that simply because I don't have to bring as much gear with me. It's a lot easier having a young child just be able to put a backpack on, have a couple rods and go. And it's a lot of fun too. It's a lot of action. You're moving around a lot. And bass are something that's pretty widely distributed. It's been kind of quiet here. I think I'm going to reel the rods in, throw them out in a different place or just check my bait. It's always a good idea to check your bait if you're getting action and then the action stops for a while. It could be because some of the baits have come off or you're snagged up or something. So it's always a good idea to check the poles every once in a while. I think we might have something on here, guys. Yeah, we've got it on, whatever it is. Another bow fin. Make at least a third one of these we've had on today. Yeah, that's too off. Maybe we can actually get him in. Oh, shoot. I have my net way over here. No, well, it's not the time for this. Shaking like a large mouth. <laughs> There's the bowfin, got it right inside of his mouth. So right there is the first bowfin that we've actually got in today. He's probably, I don't know, a few pounds. Nice little guy though. Rather calm for a bowfin though. He's not hardly moving at all now. You guys see his blue mouth in there? I don't want to stick my hand in there because he's got a bunch of teeth. They have a really neat looking mouth. We'll go ahead and send him back. There he goes. Well, well, we got another one on here. It's something really good on here. This is significantly bigger. I didn't even, as soon as I cast that one out, I got this one on. Ah, uh, he got off. That one that just got off was much bigger than the first one, than, than the one that we just reeled in. He just never really got the hook set good enough. Wow, what a terrible throw. Didn't expect to catch anything like that. I'm gonna try to throw a cast net a few times here. I don't want to throw it a bunch. I don't want to get too far away from my poles. They're down there. Biggest thing about being further away from your poles like this, you either have to have them really secured on there or you have to have the drag turned way down on them. It's the last thing you want to do, have a big fish come in and your pole goes flying. We'll try right here real quick. Oh gosh dang, I almost slipped in there. Nice and muddy here. Nothing again. I've had a really hard time getting anything in a cast net here. <clears throat> we might have something on one of these. Two lines are really slacked. I'm gonna start off with this one first. That's all tightening back up. So there's something on here, it's swimming around. Definitely a fish. We'll make sure that they're on there good first. I'll go ahead and tighten this one up too. And we'll go ahead and get him. Yep. Ah, shoot. So that one got off. And it took all the bait too, so I'll have to go ahead and get this one rebaited. Cast this one back out. We'll throw it right there. There's a little cove over there, so I'm th throwing right by the mouth of it. Now we got, we're getting a good hit on this rod now. Yep, it's got it now. It's pulling drag out. I... Might be the biggest fish of the day. Oh yeah, this is the biggest bowfin by far. Dang it, we've got another one on the line too. Shoot. I get this guy to calm down first. I don't want my pull. Dang it. That's, ah shoot, that's two of them right away. 
And of course, I've got a stick in here. Man, this is a nice bow in here, guys. It is significantly bigger than the one that I netted earlier. Yeah, that's a that's a big one. That's the biggest one I've ever gotten from this area. That might be my maybe my third biggest bow fin of all time. Uh, I really need to fight this other fish. I've got another fish on the line. I don't want to miss him. No, open your mouth, bud. We'll just keep him right there for now. He'll be fine. You know, I better go ahead and get him out of there. I don't like just letting fish sit here. And... We'll go ahead and weigh this big guy. If this one wasn't one of my biggest boats, then I wouldn't bother weighing him. I'd just go ahead and... Uh... Well, uh, well, he's in there now. Now this other one started going again. Doggone it, this bowfin's not nearly as big as that one was. You can see the other bowfin too. He's just right there running around. Yeah. Go ahead and get this little guy in. Actually, he's not really that small or anything. There's that little stinker that was in there that I couldn't get the other fish for. We'll go ahead and send him back. He's probably about four pounds. Well, there you have it, guys. I tried to get a weight on the one and I couldn't. I'm thinking he weighed at least seven pounds. Unfortunately, he got away and that other one that I was waiting on wasn't nearly the size that one was. But overall, I'm happy with it. And now all three of my lines are down, so I gotta work on cutting some fish up, getting some lines back out. I don't have much bait. This is the last of my bait. Again, I think it's got something on it. Oh yeah. Yep, we're on there. There we go. Yeah, I guess that was a boat and I didn't get to see it real well. I heard it jump out. Yep. Ah! We'll have that. Had a real good takedown, but just couldn't get the hook to set. Yeah, fish on, guys. Got the bow fin. See, they jump out right like large mouths. There we go. Bring this guy out of here. Ah, there he goes fish is back probably three pounds or so that one the hook was real easy to get out of him and that's why they get off so easy the, the hook was just barely in the top of his mouth the tops of their mouths are really hard the hook can't hardly bury in them so that was one of those where if i'd have left him on the line longer he'd have gotten off too jeez oh, oh it popped out of him that one felt like a really good one. It was strip and drag out. Well guys, I think we're gonna go ahead and wrap this one up. We've had a good day fishing. We caught quite a few bowfin and we got more online that we weren't able to catch. And I would say probably is what would be either my third or fourth largest bowfin I've ever caught and the best bowfin out of here. Unfortunately, we didn't get to weigh him as what you guys saw. But overall, it was a great day, especially since I've only been here for about two hours. I've only been fishing for about two hours. Doesn't have all that much time today. If you guys enjoy this video, make sure to hit the like button and check out other videos on my channel at Fishing Life 101. There's other great videos like this, more bowfin than I catch, more other fish too. I, I actually do catch some catfish sometimes out of here, just not very often. But I hope you guys enjoyed watching today. Stay safe and we'll see you later.